Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their June of 2016 regional auction. And they happen to have one of the rarer of the Swiss straight pull rifles. I thought this would be a cool one to take a look at. In addition to being rare, this is one of the few that isn't either a K31 or a Schmidt Rubin design. So the history on this dates back to, well, the Swiss had Vetterlis. This was a bolt action, a turn bolt, and it had a tubular magazine under the barrel. And they had long ones and they also had short ones as well as some other varieties. In 1889 they adopted a straight pull Schmidt Rubin style rifle. It had a box magazine and it used this new uh, small bore ammunition. And the Swiss wanted to get a cavalry rifle to go, or a cavalry carbine, to match with their new infantry rifles. The problem was the 1889 Schmidt Rubin had a very long receiver, it was a very long action, um, and they, they tried it, some experiments. They even, weirdly, they tried like folding wooden buttstocks hinged about here. They couldn't get anything to work really well. So what they did is they actually opened up uh, this contract to a competition. They got entries from a bunch of different companies, uh, obviously some of the Swiss companies, but they, uh, they tested out Monlicker style rifles, both straight poles and turn bolts. They tested out Mauser rifles. Uh, SIG provided a couple of bolt action rifle designs that were tested. Uh, There's a straight pole rifle from a, a two-man team that had designed one, a bunch of different guns, and ultimately the winner was the Steyr made uh, Manlicker straight pole rifle. Now you'll recognize this when we take a close look at it because it's virtually identical to the model of 1895 Austro-Hungarian Steyr Manlicker straight pole. And those are kind of known, they have a reputation for being not the greatest quality guns. Well. When you let a Swiss company like SIG or WF Burn uh, put together one of those rifles, they really do a nice job of it, and these are good examples of that. However, the rifle really was a failure. Um, there were a couple of problems with them that they got a lot of complaints about from the troops who were issued these things. Uh, one was they weren't found to be all that accurate. I can't really explain that. But the other problem, which I totally understand, was that troops complained that the bolts were really a pain in the rear to disassemble and maintain. That's definitely true. Compared to a Schmidt Rubin, this is much more of a difficult weapon to work with uh, for disassembly. So ultimately, these were replaced in 1905. They were adopted, it's the model of 1893, they first went into production and, and service in 1895 and only lasted 10 years. In 1905 they had figured out a good way to do a carbine length Schmidt Rubin and they adopted that as the model of 1905 uh, carbine. Now interestingly, uh, they changed it up again and, and adopted the model of 1911 carbine in 1911 and those 1905 guns are extremely difficult to find today because most of them, if not virtually all of them, were actually converted into 1911 pattern guns. At any rate, we're talking about the 1893 here. So why don't I bring the camera back, let's take a closer look at this and I'll show you some of the mechanical features that it has. The receiver markings on these are actually pretty sparse. You'll find the serial number up at the front left, in this case 4905, so about two-thirds of the way through production. Then on the top you just have a couple of proof marks and a little small Swiss cross. And that's all you've got for receiver markings. Now the rear sight goes from 300 out to 1200 meters. When this is folded down you actually use this as your rear sight notch and that's a 300 meter zero. When you flip this up, you go to 400, and then using that, you can use these increments to go all the way out to 12. So squeezing in this little spring-loaded lever allows you to raise and lower the sight. So the front sight here is windage adjustable, and it's got a couple of big ears to protect it. And the stock comes all the way right out to the muzzle. So the entire length of the barrel is protected. The sling swivel is on the side of the gun. This bar is combined with a, actually kind of a German style of uh, sling loop in the back, sling slot. Where the Austrian M95 rifles have a five round internal magazine using and block clips, the Swiss opted for a six round detachable magazine. It's this short little thing. Uh, six round because that is what their 1889 infantry rifles used. And these guns are 
cut here to use the same six round reinforced cardboard charger clips that the other Swiss rifles of the period used. In fact, they would go on to use that all the way through uh, the end of the use of the K31. So after the end of World War II, they were still using those six round charger clips. By the way, those are really good clips. They're getting kind of hard to find these days, but they work very smoothly and they're, they're slick. Now the bolt, the part that the troops apparently really didn't like, and understandably so, it is a straight pull. So comes back, it is a rotating bolt. You've got two locking lugs up here that rotate inside the front of the receiver to lock up, and a charging piece or a, a cocking knob back here. Now, that tab makes it fairly easy to recock the rifle should you need to, um, say if you have a dud round. And then the safety is located here on the side, just like one of the Austrian guns. It snaps in, relegates the gun, safe. To remove the bolt, you have a bolt release here that you pull out away from the receiver. And that allows the bolt to slide right out. Now to actually disassemble this, which I'll show you, but I'm not going to go through the whole process, what you would do is actually grab the bolt head and rotate it and allow it to snap down into the locked position. And then you can see a center peg here. You can pull out this striker piece, which is pre pretty stiff because the bolt's forward. Um, you can pull this out and unthread it, and that allows you to take off the cocking piece. You can get out the firing pin and its spring and remove the bolt head and the extractor. And this is definitely a more complex uh, task than, than you could get with a lot of other rifle designs at the time. One last important note uh, that I want to point out with the 1893 carbines here is that these were all designed for the Swiss GP90 ammunition. This was a semi-smokeless uh, cartridge, it used a larger round nose bullet. It was the early version of the Swiss small bore ammo, and it is under pressure compared to the more modern GP11. Now GP11 is safe to use in pretty much all of the available Swiss straight pull rifles. However, these 1893 carbines were never upgraded to use it because they were out of service by 1905, six years before the GP11 ammo was introduced. So if you have one of these or if you buy this particular one, if you want to shoot it, make sure that you hand load cartridges to GP90 spec. Don't use the modern ammunition, it's dangerous in these guns. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. These show up from time to time, but they're pretty scarce, with a, a total of only 7,750 of them made, and many of those destroyed in use over, shoot, the last 120 years. Uh, it's cool to find one, um, and in reasonably good shape, too. Now, if you would like to add this to your own collection, maybe round out that batch of Schmidt Rubens that you have, take a look at the link in the description text below. That'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page on this rifle. Uh, unlike some of the stuff in the regional auction here, it is being sold as just this rifle by itself. So if you'd like to have it, you can actually place a bid right through Rock Island's website. Thanks for watching.